if water runs across the face of the stone, it seeks its own path rather than being channeled. And uh, this has social implications as well as architectural ones, obviously. We're interested in letting the people evolve their own living patterns, just as the buildings evolve their own form, uh, rather than channeling them into some preconceived notion about the way people live in today's 20th century society. So it involves a natural path. That's the defin Chinese definition of the word Tao would be uh, path or the path. But it's not a particular path to someone else's. It's a natural path, what's ever natural for uh, any object or person. What we're doing is our, our own personal view of a, of a natural relationship to the environment. I'm sure there are people that would disagree with us. A person in our society is involved in an extremely ordered daily life. Everything that they do from morning until evening is almost completely planned. When they come home, I feel that the house should be not just a shelter from the environment, but it should also be, also be an emotional shelter. It should be something that is so free and fanciful that a person has a complete release from this work environment that he exists within. And this release, I feel, can make the person more fit in his daily life. We use the foam as a direct sculptural material, something that you use to shape a space, something that you form some kind of a, a psychological impact from that affects the people that go into it. I don't think the people who are going to live here are going to be people who are trying to go back to a more primitive time. I don't see these buildings as being primitive at all. I don't see them being Buck Rogers things, but I, I think that the people that are in here are, are interested in changing. And that's why uh, an example is some of the people who are doing curvilinear buildings now are integrating rectilinear forms and linear forms. And their argument for that is that if people have a basis of, to refer a, a frame of reference and I think that's a bunch of hooey. People are being assaulted with such novelty nowadays that uh, you can't go through a Life magazine without being totally freaked out, turned on, or what have you. But uh, I think they're going to be people who are, who are actively trying to better the, the relationship with themselves to nature and uh, themselves to other people. You're kind of stripped naked in something like this. You don't have as many things to rely on. You can't remember your room at home, things like that. It's, it's embarking on an entirely new voyage. Okay. I'm trying to move the armature. Toby, you lifted up. Pete, what are you doing? You got the end? Keep that on. Keep that box. Okay, let's go off. Okay, again, Toad. Up again. Good.
People can interact in the design of the thing. This way we can argue and shout. The, the, the technique of uh, what we're discussing now is the ability to be able to change without much problem. If we don't like the space, then we can change it and we won't run into that problem. That can be worked out in the office also, but what we're trying to do is set up enough variables to allow ourselves different directions of construction. This, this is the unconscious. All writing is pig shit. <laughs> Paradise now! This structure has now uh, achieved a, a life all of its own. I notice even if, if Evan works in an area or if I work in the area, we're not the same person. But our what we did with a particular spot on the building would tend to be uh, well very similar in nature. Yeah. Not exact, certainly, but similar because you're reacting to the building which has already evolved the personality. And that's when it becomes a very natural thing. When four people can work on the same building and do essentially the same thing, it's got to be a natural. We don't have any big discussions where we all sit down and say, now what are we going to do about the way this foot comes off the building? It's just something that, uh, that takes place naturally. Okay. Now lift. Higher. if you are, sir. Okay. Behind us is another kind of dwelling for people, an ironic complex of the old and the new. It's a way to get back to the country in a plastic house. Behind the house are the Dio Design, design Group, two of whom are designer sculptor Charles Harker and architect Tom Lee. Yeah. One of the things we're trying to do here is to uh, create an alternate environment. We're trying to show people that they have more than one choice available to them in the way they uh, deal with the environment in relation to uh, what they expect from it and what they can get from it personally. By coming out here uh, into a, a fairly virgin area and building, but building within the context of, of the land as something that you should respect and something which has direct influence in your design rather than coming out here and scraping the entire area off 
and starting from scratch with rows upon rows of houses. We come out, react to it, uh, then begin to build slowly within the framework of it and uh, try to leave it as much as we can the way we found it. Uh, you, you see a lot of people in the United States now who have to get away from the city, have to go out into the wilderness to get away from it because it's such an, an actually inhuman place to live. Uh, we're hoping that by preserving the land like this, if, uh, if we can get other people to see it and uh, realize what the possibilities are, that they can come out, live uh, outside the city, find uh, peace out here. How do you think living here might be different than living in, say, the present-day suburbs? Well, I think, I think this is a good example of, of a change in attitudes with regards to housing. In the past, with the, with the influence on technology and whatnot, we've been dealing with the house as a machine for living. I think the most important thing has been the relative convenience of a number of items. Uh, I think this is much more, I think we're dealing here with uh, the person's emotion more than anything else, what it's like to live in a, in a place. We, we care for our emotional needs, I'll put it that way, as much as uh, convenience needs. Right, trying to celebrate the function of living rather than just uh, perform all the necessary, provide all the necessary elements to uh, make it commodious. We're trying to create a situation in which a person will notice and enjoy each little act of, of uh, his daily existence. It our group stresses ecology, saying they're trying to work with the landscape with their biologically oriented forms. They haven't removed any trees or even any brush in putting up their house. They say the house will let people see the alternatives available for their homes. Kirk Wilson, I went this meeting. Uh, can you get this side? I can't handle over there. Uh, okay. Oh, that's good. Right there. Over somewhere over here. Oh, you can do that. Yeah. Kind of reinforcing it. But, see, we have no design, no, no, really, other than just some spatial concept of what we want to do. We have no idea what we're doing. It's a lot easier than trying to make decisions on paper, even in a model. A model that takes more time making a decision than you know, it is. I was going to ask you about about this this house here. Is it? Uh, is it contracted by people, or are you building it on your own? Yeah, there will be four of them. We always have this one rented. Oh, you do? Four hundred a month. Yeah. 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 I'd, I'd like to know how much money we've spent on getting as far as we have. Well, we have books that we have to do it, but we haven't filled in the books yeah. in the last couple of months. Uh, mm -hmm. Seventeen, mm -hmm. and plus eight. Uh, four thousand. We owe four hundred dollars. So put that on there. We will have spent around twelve thousand nine hundred dollars total. And when you say we, you mean everybody? Everybody. And that Dow has spent that on the land, the attorney's fees, mm -hmm. all the phone. Yeah. So they're going to be. Or is the plan that when this is done, some people are going to take off? I don't think you have to worry so much about people taking off as much as you have to, as, we, as we have to worry about where the money is coming from to complete the thing. I have no plan. I think the only thing that's going to help is trying to locate somebody. I mean, uh, granted, we don't have a whole hell of a lot of money. Money and money from El Paso. Oh, I guess I could ask Daddy to invest money, but he would only do it to bail me out personally. He doesn't want to get involved in the thing, and I'm not going to do it. I mean, it would just be a bailout. Mm -hmm. I'm sure everybody could put the panic button on. But you're not going to get bailed out. Yeah. I mean, they, I mean, it would have to be a gift. I mean, I mean, I don't see, I don't see four thousand dollars. Well, what's going to happen if we don't get the money? Bank will only give us a little more. What's the bank going to do with a piece of land with a phone company? They're not going to want to foreclose on it, but we can't just ignore them. <laughs> I 
know, it seems strange after the meeting, our situation doesn't seem to have changed very much. But I think the building assumes a life of its own after a while, and you, I mean, how could you ever leave anything like this out without completing it? It's just a matter of going ahead with it, unfortunately. It's one of those situations where if you just keep working, the money comes from somewhere. You just have to keep after it long enough to let enough people see it and realize that you're serious about what that's, you're doing. That's the real, that's the real, the, the object is to get it finished, get it completed, uh, completed like we want it to be, and uh, I think the acceptability will be of a, enough, of a high enough nature to where we can find our funds, for, at least for completing at that the level, At that level, the, the building should be able to speak for itself. We won't have to be saying anything to anybody anymore. Just bring them in and let them walk through it. The relationship between man and nature has been conceived as a deep, reciprocal involvement in which each can affect the other. As the forces of nature can bring prosperity or disaster to man, so can man disrupt the delicate balance of nature by his misdeeds. For earth and man constitute a single, indivisible unity which is governed by cosmic law, this Taoism. Building these structures, very often you feel more like an insect than a human being. I've spent a lot of time studying the uh, building processes that are used by termites. They secrete material that are generated inside their own bodies uh, that is very similar, in fact, to one of the methods that we use a direct building process in which you take the spray gun and you begin spraying. You spray and the material foams up, and then you spray again, and it's like, like building a pot using uh, a beading process where you coil the clay around and around. I'm sure you remember that from being in an art class as a child. That process, the insects use, and then we find ourselves using that same process, and you'll be doing that, and then you'll turn around and look at someone wearing a, a face mask and a pair of goggles, and with the mask and the goggles on, this person looks exactly like an insect instead of a human being. And the juxtaposition there is uh, sometimes really funny. I see these structures as being the, the hard visual equivalent of music. The creativity of sculptor Charles Harker is augmented by the professional insights of architect Charles Harker. These homes promise to be more than just unusual lumps of plastic steel and cement plaster erupting from the earth like a plant or rock formation. They are designed to last hundreds of years. When construction is finally completed, the polyurethane foam will act as insulation the equivalent of 24 to 30 inches of normal bat insulation. And that means an energy efficient home. We did an estimate with an engineer and uh, that estimate indicated that the monthly bills would probably run about 15 to $25 a month during uh, the worst part of summer and the worst part of winter. Banks are not in the business of financing artworks, so construction on the two homes has proceeded in fits and starts over the last six to eight years. All of the woodwork inside is hand-carved. Plaster is still being applied to shape the interior. Work stops when the money runs out, but that doesn't bother the creator of what will eventually become livable artworks. It's a very slow process. Uh, what you're looking at is a work of art and a, and a piece of sculpture and for that reason is not probably for just every person that uh, is looking for a house. 
but what you get back out of it is uh, something very rewarding. Living in a work of art is a very special experience. Stay with us. PM departments are next. The family is Candace Hasey, and she has been, she has really been traveling all around the country and reporting back on interesting places and people. And today, she is going to tell us the story of a fellow who's developing a rather unusual form of uh, architecture. He certainly is, Sandy. <laughs> Down in Texas, there's an architect who spent the last eight years developing a different type of home made out of polyurethane foam. <laughs> Whether it's a log cabin or a mansion, chances are your home is some form of the traditional four walls and a roof over your head. And it's probably made out of wood, brick, or even steel. Now journey with me into the hills outside of Austin, Texas, and open your eyes and your mind to a whole new experience in home building. Look closely. That's not a gremlin poking up out of the trees. It's a home made out of foam, one of two being built by an innovative architect, Charles Harker. I've always wanted to design structures that were for people better than what we already have. So with this structure, I decided that I would make use of, of what I came to call a cultural mechanism. In this instance, the fairy tale, something that all of us have in our backgrounds. And so you walk down this path, and when you come upon this really strikingly unusual structure, you still are delighted by it instantly. Somehow you, you feel akin to it or close to it, even though you may not be sure quite why. I see a house as psychological shelter, in addition to being shelter from the elements. So I try to design a house so that it will be soothing and calming. And the forms in the house are designed much, much like music, so that they form flowing lyric patterns. The forms in this house are nothing like I've ever seen before. How did you come up with them? Traditionally, we build with wood, and it's a straight material. Uh, when I began using these spray systems, I started having to look at, at microstructures, like what you see down in the human body at three to 30,000 power. And I started studying those systems and then trying to relate what I learned back into the houses and structures that I was designing. And when you watch the builders at work, well, they almost look more like insects than human beings. Charles calls his homes habitable sculptures. They're really works of art, and they're built to last two to three hundred years. This is not a conventional door. <laughs> no. It's hidden. How do you get in? Right here. This section of wall pivots open. Terrific. What is this? It's a 14-foot high headboard oriented toward the west so that the setting sun shines through those uh, openings at the, at the top up above. How did you come up with this idea? I wanted to show people that uh, the setting sun could be a part of their lives inside the house. Where does this go over here? This goes back around to the living area. Is this going to be all open like this? No, this will be translucent fiberglass. I see. I feel like I'm in... Uh, a movie set. <laughs> <laughs> no, this one is for real. This is the kitchen. And then this area over here is another area that'll be filled in with fiberglass. It's part of the solar heating system for the house. This seems so light and airy in comparison with the cave-like feeling I got from the other home. Right, I, I was trying with the two structures to show that you could use the same vocabulary of forms and achieve two completely different effects. You've done it. There's no question about that. Now, where does this go? This leads back into the living area. This is a space that evolved from studies we did of primitive living patterns. A sunken living room. Right. All focusing on this central fireplace. Right now, banks aren't used to financing works of art, so the construction is moved along in bits and pieces. But for Charles Harker, the dedication is all worth it. I began wanting to be an artist and wanting to be a sculptor. 
and my only reticence about that was the fact that most sculpture seems so small that you could walk around it, you could see it, you could take it in and then dismiss it. If it's as large as a house, if it's something that affects your daily life, then there's the possibility that you can make art functional in a way so that it helps a person to grow, become something more than he was before. That's what I think art really is all about. That's what I'm trying to achieve with my work. Really the most unique things I've ever seen. Did you feel comfortable there? Would you have liked to have lived in one, do you think? I really did. You know, initially it was a little bit disarming because it's so unconventional. But after a while, it had that soothing, calming effect. Mm. And they're energy efficient, too. Six inches of foam equals 24 to 30 inches of normal insulation. Ah, okay. Candy, thank you. We'll hear more from you and more of your travels. <laughs> We're going to be back.